Welcome into Off the Bench, presented by All Star Toyota. Ooh, you're scary. We're bringing you the spookiest sports talk in town. With Jacob Hester and T Bob Abear. Terrifying and terrible. Live from the haunted Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studio, here's Jacob Hester and T Bob Abear. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Off the Bench. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a spooky one today. After uh, a, a, a full game of horrific football gifted to you uh, by your New Orleans Saints and uh, 30 minutes of a nightmare spiral that was Saturday night in College Station where it looked like all your dreams were on the edge of coming true and then uh, everything completely unspooled and they just shattered um, very quickly, very effectively. Uh, Pretty interesting film to watch and really dissect exactly how it all went down, the combination of events that led to Saturday's outcome. So like Taylor said, probably talk... Mainly LCU here, hour one, getting in the Saints, hour two. I mean, not all of us are upset about the Saints. Jake's Bolts did end up on the winning end of that uh, thing that at least the TV guy told me was an NFL football game. <laughs> um, again, the New Orleans Saints are really putting that to the challenge. Um, Jake, what's up, though, brother? How are you feeling today? Uh, uh, yeah, interesting weekend. Very interesting weekend because, you know, certainly some lows with the way the LSU game turned out. Um, you know, unfortunately for a lot of people, the Saints lose as well. Uh, then you have like the Jaden Daniels play, which I know we'll get into. Like that, yeah, was, you know, that was a pretty cool like weekend winners. Stuff yeah, for sure. certainly a pretty cool high to kind of see there. But uh, yeah, disappointing, obviously. And we're going to get into every aspect of the game. Um, a lot of us will remember I was a part of a game very similar uh 2005 Tennessee yeah where you're controlling every narrative of the first half and not that you're counting on uh, it's already a dub but you're like okay what in the world could possibly go wrong in the second half where you're not victorious and here comes a backup quarterback just like that game and all of a sudden you're in a dog fight and that now that game ended in overtime this one this one was never close after the second half started. Uh, they employed that most ancient of footballing techniques, the two quarterback system, and you were uh, completely unprepared for it. Look I, here. So after the show, Jake, you know, we, like when we do the whiskey and wine or whatever, like I always say, right, that's more entertainment than actual analysis because it's also surface level and emotional. Yeah. Um, but I was pretty adamant after the game that I felt like that was less about LSU screwing up and more about AM making adjustments, playing well, and kind of manipulating you into those mistakes. So I kind of watched the film wanting to know if if I agreed with that take or not after watching it for a few hours yesterday. And I do. I do. I, I think I think it's a credit to Texas AM and the changes that they made. Um, some of the tendencies from LSU that uh, they preyed upon. And it's exactly what Brian Kelly said after the game. And, and the reason why that door is open is is because offensively, uh, you were very one-dimensional. You're very one-dimensional. And, and, and also, objectively, they just did not prepare for Marcel Reed at all. I mean, Greg Penn talked about it after the game. Yeah. Brian Kelly said it without saying it. If, if, you, if you listen to the comments where it's a lot of like, because of last week, we thought we had the running quarterback thing down if, like, he would come in. But they definitely were not sitting there repping Marcel Reed no, packages during the week. It's college football. It's not the NFL. And that's not an excuse. That's just the way it is. I mean, you have a certain amount of time. Yeah, you only got limited time. Yeah, that, that's what I was telling people even Saturday. was like, and I know you live limited want to time. I, I You're not going to practice just- read. But I bet you the coaches thought, like, but we have the systems in place. Right. Like, the coaches prepared somewhat for it. And they're like, well, we have the system. Look, we just played Taylor Green. Like, right. we have the systems in place. If they want to put Reed in, we should be able to handle it. The problem is, my God, Reed's fast. <laughs> and uh, you set up a running quarterback with multiple short fields. That, so it was a perfect of storm of bad. Like, yes. you didn't make him throw. That is another part of it that is going to play into the kind of the breakdown 
Um, and, and look, you probably had some things in place, and you don't, you know, two completely different quarterbacks, two different offenses, depending on which quarterback was in there. But also, he had like he had one real drive. The rest of them, yeah. And, and the first one that he did after a bad pass by Nuss, well, what do you do to a backup quarterback? You get him extremely comfortable from the jump start of him coming into the game. He didn't yeah. have to go eighty-five yards. No, he goes about fifteen yards. And so that gets him confidence. And then he has a couple of more short drives to give him even more confidence. And so it was the perfect storm for them to bring in a backup quarterback and have success. And let's not act like he hasn't played either. I mean, he has certainly played. He's won big games. We thought he was the guy. Year. Remember? Like, we thought Wigman, we, he, yeah. we, we were shocked they put Wigman back in Mizzou. And then Elko defended Wigman so emphatically they were like, oh, okay, never mind. Like, they really believe Wigman's the guy. And they did. Because he was god awful, and they left him in there as long as they possibly could. Yeah, Wigman was absolutely cooked. It's almost you know what's crazy about this game, Jake. If your defense played a little less good, Wigman stays in the game. <laughs> like like if you could have if you could have allowed Wigman to just complete a couple more, maybe just let let him have a little more success. He stays in the game, and you probably win the game because you had him dead to rights. It was the best defensive performance that LSU's put on tape by far this entire year. I mean, shutting down the run, he looked completely discombobulated when he was going through his reads in terms of coverages, the pass rush consistently getting home, and then everything shifted. Um, Easy E says, to be clear, this A&M team sucks. Okay, do they? Uh, cause they're undefeated in the SC. They have one loss and that's the be- Nick Scorton outside of Kennard. That's the best D lineman you faced all year. Nick Scorton was whooping yo ass, man. And it's not just in the pass rush. Um, he was explosive in, in, in run defense, but it's not just him. It's Jamar Turner, Jamar Stewart, like that whole A&M D line, which we knew was very good. But from a pass pro standpoint, I thought you'd be fine. I'm still a little disappointed you didn't manage to throw it better. Obviously, that's the root of a better. lot of all of evil at all. Yeah, at, at all. all. But um, but no, but this is not, I mean, the, 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 it's that, not a bad A&M. No. That's, that's a ridiculous thing to say. Well, that A&M team with Reed at quarterback, I do think it's a, a much better team because of a couple of reasons. Because Reed's talented. Also, they don't have receivers. They don't. They don't, they don't have receivers that are game-changing receivers. Yeah. So if you don't have that, why even try to force the issue? Now, game planning against them for a full week and knowing the offense, maybe that helps you out some. But we're talking about really good running backs. I mean, multiple. It's not just Moss. Multiple really good running backs. And when you bring Reed in, you kind of don't have to worry as much about your receiver play. No. Because, you know, the receivers in that game probably made they made the one play, the 55-yarder, and that's a heck of a throw. But the way they construct it with Reed at quarterback, it does change who they are and who they can be. Um, so, uh, Brandon Rishu says, I've, uh, I, I hear you, T-Bow, but it was more about our mistakes than their adjustments. The guy with two INT sets so after the game, Shockness threw him the ball when he did it in, in the first half. See, I, I, I just, I simply disagree. The first Nuss pick is the one that I could point to and say, okay, yes, like that should not have been thrown at the same time. Uh, what? I mean, they were all, they were all not great. Yeah, but they played on your tendencies on the second one. I mean, you've been throwing that alert hitch forever, and so they gave you the exact same look, tricked him into thinking it was man, only the guy's the flat defender, and he sneaks out there. Like, they played exactly. You had already thrown that hitch twice successfully in the game. They set you up, and then he almost threw the pick again on the hitch, the next drive, and he had to double clutch. So, no, I'm saying that's a tendency. Right, oh, you've been yeah, rushing yeah. four. They know the back's yeah, gonna. The, th- the third one though is like you got to throw that one away. The second one, for sure, to your point. Is I'm saying the insane. first one is like that's you got to take the good with the bad. On third and fifteen in the first half, Nuss scrambled around, threw across his body, crazy throw. You know, one that you would not say to throw. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Aaron Anderson, you know, Kyron Lacey undercuts it, big first down, right? Um, so he he was trying to make that same type of play, and it was really bad. Second one, I feel like he got manipulated. And then that third one, I feel like he got manipulated. They know the back checks, you know, okay, do I have anybody? And then he's, he's been leaking out. They've been using that very effectively the last couple of weeks. And they had all their four-man games playing up there. And they, I, do you think the end instinctually, uh, do you think the end instinctually decided to man up uh, uh, Kane Durham there? Or was that a part of the call? The the the, the game from originally? Because he doesn't really rush that hard. Yeah. 
he kind of loops around and is and is it looks like he's waiting on it a, a little bit and and you'd have to see because you can make a case for either one but certainly i mean in, in those throws now the second one we you see that all the time uh when you get fooled there and, and they make a play on it sure we could have a conversation about that one the first and third just can't happen though uh, the first one is obviously see i feel like the first i feel like the third was kind of like do you think you even saw the defender? You. I mean, either way, like it does nothing for you. Um, it's a two yard, it's a two yard throw in that situation. But you know, the game pretty much was already in hand in that one. But for the first one, it's you also have to realize the situation. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah, up seven, you can live to fight another yeah, day. Yeah, you're up seventeen to seven. Um, sure, they're about to put Reed in, in, into the game, but you make him go sixty yards instead of the fifteen yards, and. You throw that one into the stands, and you know who knows what where the game ends. Who knows where the game flow goes there? But it's just there was there was two defenders there. There was nothing you were going to do in that moment, and and that's really the first time. So for all the talk about Nussmeyer and uh, you know that being the thing, maybe in the yeah, offseason that you kind of kind of worry like about. It's like well, that hasn't really happened. Sure, there's been some times where you know he's made some some throws that maybe almost got intercepted. Like that that was the first one where it's like okay, that's the first time that I've seen that in this season. They, um, to me, oh, and, and what really sucks is you go back and you look and Xavier Thomas is a much easier scramble throw and is wide open coming straight back at Nuss, like running back to the and ball. Right in front. Right in front yeah. of him on the edge. Like he could have made that throw with his eyes closed. Yeah. And he just got locked in on Aaron Anderson. How could you not? Because Aaron Anderson's awesome. That would be one of the massive positives this game. I also think, though, Jake, in retrospect, um, yes, you put up 17 in the first half. The offense, and we can talk about the missed field goals, but the stalled drives are the bigger part of the missed field goals, and the offense really wasn't that good, actually, throughout the game. Right. You were never on schedule after first down. You were constantly in second and long, third and long. Now you made some very impressive plays in order to kind of mask some of those deficiencies and the defense in one of your touchdown drives set you up with a short field. Great job by say dry forcing the fumble. Great job uh, by, I mean, it should have been a, a one play touchdown. Mason Taylor dropping that initial pass and then a beautiful uh, play design after trade as green mm -hmm. gets you down there. Mason Taylor immediately makes up for it, but still that's a short field that you had, right? Yeah. Um, the, the, the Aaron Anderson touchdown, Awesome 75 yard touchdown. Like Nuss throwing it a little bit behind Anderson by design because he now had to fit it through those defenders. Anderson having the athleticism to reach back, uh, stumble, stay up with his arm, then have the speed to house it. Fantastic. But outside of that first field goal drive, you didn't really have like a good sustained rhythmic drive, and you could never run the ball all night long. And so like, like, like Coach Kelly's kind of talking about a couple of things when that happens. One, you're forcing your quarterback to just do, like he said, stand on his head. Yeah. Like, like every time you're throwing it and, and, he, and, and he feels like he has to make the play every single time because you're constantly behind the chains. And that goes into the pass rush, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that, and that was going to say. And then secondly, you unlock like Scorton and all those other guys, uh, because they, they, they can just be full. One track, my, and then you know Dellinger goes down, and that hurt you bad. M M um, Paul M Mabinga, that was. I mean, look, of course he struggled. That's a, that is uh, a D line up there with the best that you'll face this season, and suddenly you're thrown in there against those guys, and so. And so I guess my point is, um, I'm still very bullish on this LSU team. When the defense was kicking ass before they got hit with a curveball that they were not ready for at all, they looked fantastic executing the game plan offensively. You're obviously going to have to run the ball better. I think you're going to face easier front sevens down the road, and you will run the ball better kind of because of it. Um, and, and, and the fact that you put yourself in a position to be up 17-7 is something to be applauded. But even the 17-7, again, Defensively, it was dominant, dominant, dominant. Offensively, I feel like it was a bit, a bit fraudulent. And then you kind of saw that uh, once in, in the second half when it just completely snowballed on you and unspooled.
Yeah, I mean, we talk about the run game. It's not like the inability to run the ball. They, they they didn't even get started. I mean, it was never even a conversation. And it's surprising. And I'm not saying I ever thought you were going to run for 150 even in a game like this. But what was it? 23 carries for 24 yards, I believe, last yeah, time I mean, that I looked on the broadcast. And then, like, you know, we I've credited Joe Sloan to this offense for uh, being willing to, you know, run on second down to stay on schedule. And they get into second and 10. And uh, I charted, and I may have missed a couple, but I have six second and 10 runs. And they went for minus two, no gain, minus two, three yards, no gain, three yards. Yeah, so as a play caller, it's like, all right, I'm not doing that anymore. But it's something that you try to stay on schedule. You need to stay on schedule. Um, Gosh, it was, you know, you're trying to run right at the teeth of that defense, and you just, you weren't going to be successful in that. Um, Yeah, you surprised. There's not any more edge stuff, no stretch, stretch, no horn boss. The stretch zone they ran against Arkansas was successful. It just looked like they just got. They just kind of went back to okay. We're just going to run a little bit of inside zone, and that's gonna that's gonna make it work. I I don't know what they saw on film to 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 not maybe try to get a bit more creative in the run game, but it um it's tough to beat. It, it's look. It's always going to be tough to beat a very good team on the road, and it's it's even harder when you can't run the ball. And granted, because of how solid you played early on you set yourself up with the opportunity to overcome those elements. But then when you turn the ball over, you know, that that obviously changes everything. And it was as fascinating of an unspooling as you will ever see in terms of uh, just the perfect storm of mistakes that, 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 that happened and A&M uh, took advantage of. But no, I mean, look. But but for what it's worth, for me, um, I still don't. I'm not saying. Obviously, you left some meat on the bone, right? Like LSU, LSU made mistakes. But when I see it, a, a comeback that dominant and that overwhelming, I, I'm not. I'm not going to sit here. I don't know. I feel like you have to credit the opponent um, I mean, yeah. for beating you. Yeah, we could do some of that. And certainly LSU is going to, you know, take some of this because it's some of the things that they did as a combination of both. Uh, what's going to be disappointing is, you know, being there in Cal field, you had the crowd out of it. Yeah, I know they were done. I know. I mean, you had some walking to the exits. The student section was like right in front of us in the broadcast booth and I'm looking down and they're going to the exits and they're, they're not happy. I was texting with Lucci after the game, and he was about to send me a congratulatory text at halftime, he said. Oh, I, I mean, I talked to some of our guys. And he barely, and he at, barely at, held off. At Tex Ags, and they were the same thing, like almost like wanted to say congratulations at halftime. I'm like, this thing ain't over. But again, it's because if Wigman had played, it was over. Yeah. Like regardless of what I'm talking about with LSU's offense being a little fraudulent in the first half, A&M's offense could not, would not have been able to adjust and move the ball with Connor Wigman. Just was never going to happen. You had that version of their offense dead to rights. And I see some people talking about, I mean, come on, you had Taylor Green last week. How are they not more ready for Reed? I mean, Reed looked quick, bro. He was running that thing to perfection. He only threw two passes. One of those last pulls where he wrote it for about, I mean, he, the moment he, everybody tackled the running yes, back. Yes, the, 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 the running back's being tackled yeah. as he still has the ball yeah. in his belly and pulls out. It was, um, choo. It was, uh, that was a sight to ball. And you gave him short fields, you know? You gave him short fields. You gave him the opportunity to gain confidence immediately. Yes, and maximize his skill set. Yes. You did not force him. Like, you forced Connor Wigman in a situation that made him uncomfortable throughout the night. You gave, uh, Marcel Reed situations to make him comfortable. All right. Um, let's go to break. We'll continue to break down uh, this game here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench. Go to oakparkevents.com, oakparkevents.com. Uh, look, man, if, 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 if you want to throw a holiday Christmas party or lunch in or anything like that, um, go to Park 73. We got a couple of great d- dates left for you. Uh, and, and look, man, who doesn't love the vibes during the holiday season, right? And so you go to Park 73. It's gorgeously decorated, very festive. We got Christmas trees everywhere. They're going to blow your mind. We got that beautiful 
outdoor fireplace where you can go set up and get a s'more station ready to go. Put you, your employees, your friends, whoever in that holiday spirit. Okay, so a couple of dates left. Act now before they go to Park 73. And then, of course, we also have Oak Lodge. And if you need a wedding, corporate event, meeting, retreat, seminar, anything like that, turnkey service, customizable to what you want in terms of food, ambiance, music, all of it. They're the best. Oakparkevents.com. Welcome back to the ninth ranked morning sports show in America. Off the bench. Welcome back to OTB. Um, so I am uh I I am a I, I am a believer in Joe Sloan and this offense. Um, and I guess so I'm, I'm, so I'm prefacing these statements with that because I feel like there's been an undercurrent throughout this entire season of like, our play calling sucks, our play calling sucks. And it's not something that I, uh, agree with objectively, uh, that said, yeah, King MJ in the by for YouTube chat says, so does it run any screens, sweeps, toss plays, nothing. With even a touch of creativity. I mean, you can take the touch of creativity part out of it, but but I do kind. I mean, yes, I, Jake. There does. I, I I don't know why you seem to be missing some of those traditional elements of an offense. You're really good in a lot of spots. Yeah. But but like you're you're missing some of those other elements that we're used to seeing as kind of change of pace sorts of things that could also right. help break LSU tendencies. Which would probably go yeah. a long way right now. Yeah, I think it slows down some stuff as well. And we were talking about during the break. Um, I think Aaron Anderson is like a perfect kind of guy to run like a little smoke screen now screen, depending on what you want to call it, where it's, you know, basically, you know, let's say you got trips and Aaron Anderson's in the middle of the trips. And let's say Mason Taylor's on the inside of the trips. And it's like, okay, well, Mason Taylor goes and blocks the guy in front of Aaron Anderson. He takes one step back, you throw it to him, and you allow him to become a returner. Yeah. You get Xavier Thomas is a returner. You know, he would do, you know, really well in that as well. And he feels like somebody that would do well in the screen game. And so, yeah, I mean, that, that's, look, it's a valid question about that part of it. Um, the creativity, I, I still think there's creativity in this offense. Just because you're not running double throwback around the horn screen doesn't mean that you're not creative. I mean, I mean, see, here, here's where I, it's like you really got to be careful about being a prisoner of the moment. Yes. You I have agree. been a objective and inarguable top five offense in the entire country the whole year. And that's facing some of the best defenses in the entire country. You faced another one of the best defenses in the entire country in their house. And you had some real early success. It ends up snowballing. You end up screwing up, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna get me to have 20 minutes of evidence of game time evidence, right? 20 yeah. minutes of game evidence outweigh the eight games previous to this. Like, I, I think that's such an overcorrection. And if, and, and if I was to emerge on the other side of this game, be like, Oh, this offense sucks. Blah, 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 blah. Well then, I mean, then, 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 then nothing I say means anything because I'm not actually being objective or analyzing or looking at the much larger, yeah. larger, Sample size of data that we have. The offense is not perfect, obviously, right? I mean, it's actually insane that you've been a top five offense and you can't run the ball that well. Now, again, you're gonna run it better against worse defensive lines and 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 front sevens. And so, like, I don't think that's as bad as it felt on Saturday. But when you run up against those best front sevens, yeah, that is probably the biggest hole in your offensive game. But like think about it dude, through the going into this game and then through the first half people were talking about us being uh you know climbing up to be like the, the the number one quarterback on the draft board and everything. So like what that that just all disappears? Like that just all didn't exist. No, I I so Yeah. You I'm you, with you. You, you you got beat, but I'm not <laughs> I'm not I'm not ignoring what is still like I'm still bullish about the team. I know nobody's going to want to hear that today. I'm still very bullish about this LSU football team. I think I think the defensive improvement continues to be freaking fantastic. 
the way they shut down Wegman was mind blowing and something that we never, or excuse me, mind blowing in the context of again what you experienced last year and at the beginning of this year. The improvement is so impressive. Um, offensively, again, we know it's a very powerful offense. You got to get better at running the ball, but it's still, like I said, top five. Special teams got to clean oh. it up, but on the whole, Damian Ramos and that operation's been great. They just choke. They piss down their leg. Yeah, that that operation, it's very disappointing. And look, on Wednesday, I know Flynn's gonna have if if he's in a lot to say about it because he was he was a holder uh throughout his career in the NFL and in college. I was trying to wonder, I mean, I can never parse where like it's all going wrong. I mean, on the two misses you had I mean, we obviously know Slade Warrior screwed up the third one because literally nobody on the team was ready for that ball to be snapped. Um, that's the second time it's happened this year. Kelly was uh, very adamant after the game that it will not happen again. Um, on the first two, Jake, did you? I thought the first. I, I thought the first one was a poor hold. You had and, laces. Laces came in on both. If that means anything, so you had to try yeah. to spin it. But second one, and I that, don't know. It looked like Ramos's plant foot. But I don't know. I don't know. I thought the second snap was high, and yeah. in real time. It felt like there was a slight pause by Ramos because of it. And when you're trying, like, that's the edge of his distance. Like, that's the very edge of it. He's been highly consistent, but that's the edge of it. And everything's got to be perfect in the operation. It, it can't be what it was, certainly, right? And a high snap, and Todd goes up and gets it and then tries to put it down. But I saw a slight pause, and it messed up the operation. That, that Like, that's got to be clean. You on the road in the SEC, that's that's nine points. And at worst, it's six points. That's a touchdown that you didn't have in that contest. And even as bad as it got, as sideways as it got, if you got those points, right, you got the ball with a chance to go take the lead still. And so it's just been something that's been really good all season long. But, I mean, questionable hold on the first one. Uh, the second one, a high snap. The third one, I don't know what the hell that was. Right? That Like, those things can't happen. And then, Brain fart. like, their punter flipped the field for them multiple times. Oh, yeah, their times. punter was awesome. That is true, man. That is something I did and you not realize. less than 40 yards every time you kicked it. Yeah, that's that's something that – and I know that was a big concern of the coach staff was LSU's ability to consistently get the punting that they needed. Uh, but that's something that I did not notice at all real time that jumped off the film was their punter was elite. And and it forced you to to be in a lot of long field situations. I mean, he was 50-plus, I think, at least every punt that I remember yeah. into the field. I mean, he's 50-plus, and you're 37 and a 38-yarder that I remember. Like, that, we're talking about two first downs type difference in the punting game, right? And so, like, all those things matter. When you're on the road and you're trying to go, and as an underdog, a slight underdog, but still, as an underdog, you're trying to go and win the game and you have control like that, you start letting little things like that creep in. Poor operation on field goals, poor punting. Uh, you know, they're doing a really nice job in the special team stuff. Like that third phase, that, that stuff's major in a game like that. And yeah. you didn't handle it well at all. No, no. I mean, you lost you lost special teams phase badly. Um Offense you lost because even though you, again, even though you had some success in that first half, it was still like, you know, ideally, Jake, you wouldn't be lining up for two 49 field, yard field goals, right? right? Like those drives stalled out for a reason. Just a complete lack of success on first down. You could not stay on schedule. And against that defense, it turns to be a disaster. So you kind of lost there. And then the defense, you know, you didn't lose until you did. But I, I'm still giving kind of the defense a bit of a pass because of the context of the short fields and a a personnel change that they just were not at all ready for. Um, I mean, the Marcel Reed. And it's interesting because we can sit here and criticize the coaches, but we didn't talk about Marcel Reed. You know what no. I'm saying? Like, like I didn't like I didn't expect him to play because once he got back out of the game plan, you know, you went with Wigman in the Mizzou game. It's like okay, and then they won. And again, you you really defended Wigman as being like the guy in the post game. Yeah. The now Mizzou we talked game. about Reed before that game. Yeah, like, I thought it, wait, we thought what it was are you a doing? starter. Yeah. And then you come back in Mississippi State and Wigman struggles, and they didn't replace him in that game, and so you're thinking, okay, look. 
right, wrong, or indifferent, they're rolling with Connor Wigman. He's their guy. Yeah. That, that's who they're going to go with. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that there was a point in practice where you're like, okay, well, you know, here Reed comes in the game for a change of pace, like maybe one play here, two plays here. Um, yeah. But A&M kind of showed you, at least you thought, that it was Wigman. But like you said earlier, you were dominating him so much, they had no choice but to put Reed into the game. And then once it became a short field situation, because Gordy mentioned on the broadcast, like Reed was warming up a little bit before then. But I think because it's like, okay, hey, we got this turnover we're right here. We're like on the 15 yard line. Yeah. Hey, let's throw him in. This is perfect. Um, And Reed's effect on the defense is pretty incredible to see on film. I mean, he had them frozen in place. Like, I, I, I want to say, uh, you know, one of the first play, first few plays, I think maybe, you know, because he scored the first one. But then after, it's like one play he pulls, he gets four yards. The next play, Whit Weeks tries to cheat the pull, and he hands it to Le'Veon Moss, he gets like 20 yards. Right? Like, he sucked. That, that defense was playing so aggressive. They were dictating. They had, they, they, they had their foot on the throat, and he completely sucked all the aggression. Yeah. Out of the defense. I've actually, it, it was one of the most insane um, shifts that I've ever seen in terms of what a player or more, more maybe even like a concept, what it can do. Like you want to see uh, in, in, in like the, the, the clinic tape on how quarterback runs, uh, the effect that they can have, how they're used, how they get you an extra body in the run game, how they force the de- 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 defenses to cover more of the field. It was, um, again, it, it, it was, it was just, it was, I've never seen it so uh, stark in terms of what it was before he came in to what it was after. And like I said, that pull on the run that made it 28, 17 was just, it was just crazy. And even sometimes you had the right call. So like sometimes you know, you're, you're bringing major burns off the edge to allow your end to crash and influence the pull. But then, like, Burns and one play, who played well, really, really played well when he was in there. Um, burns just took a bad angle, right? Yeah. And so he pulls it. He's still able to just get upfield because Burns in it, close it down because uh, he's expecting him to kind of run outside. It's just uh, Marcel Reed just, he changed everything, man. He changed everything. And it was uh, just as wild how he froze that defense in place. Um. All right, when we get back, keep breaking down this game. Uh, continue to give us your takes in chat. More Off the Bench coming up next. Off the Bench. I mean, look, okay, we're going to have to get these comments. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> are y- are y- y'all are, y'all like, I could not disagree with a lot of what y'all are saying more. Uh, go to ColemanRoof.com, ColemanRoof.com. Coleman Roof and Construction, Louisiana's most complete, most reliable and most respected roofing company. Uh, look, man, they've been at it for over 40 years. And they can handle any size project, commercial, residential, doesn't matter. They can handle any type of roof. Okay, they have certified installers for all the major brands, all the different types. It's anywhere in the state, and it's even the construction portion as well. So, like, if you have any interior damage to your home through a hole in your roof or something falls in your roof, they rebuild the interior, then they fix the roof. ColemanRoof.com. Yeah, go to the website today. Right there on the homepage, you'll see what they can do for you as far as a commercial building. Don't forget residential as well. Truly, like T-Bob said, a one-stop shop for all your roofing needs. ColemanRoof.com. Let's get back to breaking down the film on Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. So, uh, uh, there's like quite a few people in chat are like, oh, sounds like T-Bob's finally coming around to what Matt was saying on Saturday, that this is more about LSU's mistakes. I don't know what I have. I don't know. I, I'm going to blame myself for not correctly communicating how I feel about this game. Because if that was your takeaway from listening to the first 40 minutes of this show, that is not at all what I've been trying to say. And it is not to say that LSU played mistake-free, obviously, right? But this is not like, uh, in my opinion at least, um, there are some games where you feel like you fumbled the bag and there are others where somebody 
kicks in your door with a ski mask and they take the bag. Uh, and this game to me feels much more like the latter. Like, how do you get to cry? How do you get to say, oh, it's about us screwing up when you ran? How many yards did you run it for, Jake? Uh, I think you had 23 carries for 24 yards. How many did they run it for? Let's see. Uh 242. They ran 49. I want to get the rushes right. They ran 49 <laughs> times for 242. Like, so, hey, so let's you take. Can I rush 240 to 20 and you want to well, like, oh Let's take God. the sack yards away, okay? Yeah. Let's take how, do you, how do you do that? What do you mean? Like, do you have. Or just you do, are you just doing it wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's take the sack yards away, okay? You ran for 40 yards if you take the sack yards away. You still ran for 1.9 yards per rush. What if you, what if, wait, did you, what if you do that with them? Where does their rushing numbers go up? Because you got, didn't you? I mean, you, yeah. you had a few sacks. They go up to 264 on the ground, <laughs> 5.9 yards per carry. Okay. Okay. But sure, that was just because LSU screwed up. You got outrushed 260 to 50 guys. Like, well, do we know what winning football is? Basically, like 270 to 40. 270 to 40. <laughs> And you lost a turnover battle, but you screwed it up. And I understand how you arrived there because you looked so good the first half, right? But the other truth about this game is you just cannot, you almost have to look at A&M like they had two different offenses because you cannot look at any of the success that you had against the Wigman offense because Marcel Reed was... Uh, just whole, it was wholly different. Now, the worst part about that, Jake, is I thought you gave yourself a chance when you survived just the haymakers when all of a sudden you look up and it's 28-17 and you're like, what? And then you have the huge catch by Aaron Anderson. Again, an awesome game. Um, you have the huge catch by Aaron Anderson to get you the goal line. Uh, you end up scoring the touchdown. Yeah. And, and, oh, Trey has almost got in there too. But you're like, okay. Okay, 28-23, let's get this two-point conversion. Maybe, maybe we stabilize a bit here. You missed the two-point conversion, um, which sucked. And I'm trying to remember what exactly that, uh, how that. It was, a, I mean, a high throw over the middle. No, I know, but I'm trying to, oh, I think I think Mabinga and Chester might have gotten blown oh, yes, up. Yes, yes, yes Right yes, up yes. the middle. Yeah. Um, so you missed that. That always takes a little momentum out then. But the bigger part of that is you finally had Marcel Reed with a long field to go, mm -hmm. and you let him hit the immediate 50-yarder. And so he could just get right back yeah. to like, oh, wait, no, let's just run the ball. So you had a little bit, you had a little bit of a of a of a whiff of a chance there, and then you let Marcel Reed hit. It was a beautiful throw. Yeah, well, you had an eye violation by your safety, Gilbert. Yeah. And, well, and, and and why does that happen? Because they've been running, running the ball the, the entire yep. time, right? And he's like, and he's not ready for that. It was actually, I think it was Alexander who was the corner on the it play. Was. It was like perfect by him. Like he funneled him right to the safety that he thought was going to be there. And this Alexander, by the way, continues to be really, really good. And he, you know, funnels him to the safety and the safety's two steps behind. And then he tries to make a play late, try to make a great individual effort. But it was a, look, it was a great pass. An incredible 55-yard deal he and, launched that thing he's playing confident uh, he was <laughs> oh my, he, he certainly was and you could almost feel that one coming it's like eventually they're going to take a shot because you know they've run so well and i mean he threw two passes he was two of two for like 70 yards right yeah and so like that was the moment two, two, that was yards. that was the break back. that was the, the the bag breaker yeah was that play right yeah, there Junior, because you, whatever whiff of hope you had was kind of yeah. sucked out yeah because you got right back in it and you're like okay it's five point game um you know, offensively, we just had a pretty nice drive. Like, let's go do this deal. And then immediately, everything kind of falls right back on them. Um, all right. Uh, let's respect the clock here a bit. We're going to go to break. When we get back, uh, maybe end up with some positives because there was good on this film and and maybe like some final thoughts as well, though I think this game's going to have a bit of a gravitational pull during today's show, if I had to guess. More OTB. Keep it locked. Off the bench. Hey, guys, I want you to go to Community Steel Company, communitysteelco.com, communitysteelco.com. Community Steel is your one-stop steel shop. They're right there in Gonzales, Louisiana. They got all your purlin, tubing, roofing, sheet metal, steel buildings. Um, they, got, they, got, they got everything, man, and they manufacture it all on site. So you get the best prices. No middlemen jacking up the price for you on the back end. 
Go check them out today. Community Steel Company, communitysteelco.com. Yeah, when you go there to that website, always remember top right corner of the sites where you can click on Community Steel. It shows you exactly where they're located in Gonzales, Louisiana. They've been there already for 46 minutes waiting on you. They get there early. They want to help you out. So we highly encourage you go see them if you can. But if you can't, the website is a great tool. Again, communitysteelco.com. And then throughout the state of Louisiana, if you can't get there, 225-647-2020 is the number, communitysteelco.com. Welcome in to the best morning sports-ish show around. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. T-Bob, Jake, Alondra, Taylor hanging out with you today. Um, all right, some of the positives from this weekend. Um, I did you like trade as green in this offense? He, he did get, you know... One time they asked him to block uh, to reach block Shamar Stewart. That was not maybe not the best idea, but 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 again, I think he has a great role to play. I said Aaron Anderson, awesome. I mean, Lacey was really good. Um, oh, Javier sucks. His uh, we, we, you know we talked about him a lot last week. Is that interior pass rush specialist? And he had one sack. He had three times where he just completely dominated the guard. Like Suggs was fantastic. Really, the whole line, the whole D line was. I know they ended up getting, um, you know, A and M just. I thought Gio, Marcel Reed Gio took Piaz over. Played pretty well. Too. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Piaz played great. Got good run stuffs. He had the big fourth and three pass breakup. Um, I love the effort that Savian Jones and Braden Swinson continue to play with. Especially Jones, he's just so big and he just throws his body around. And and and, and Braden as well. But you know, we don't give Savian his his flowers um, quite as much. Like I said, I thought. Uh, Major Burns was playing really solidly. It's 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 just it's 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 a weird film defensively because again against Wigman everybody kicked ass. It looked like a continuation of the Arkansas game in a lot of ways. And then once Reed came in, everybody sucked. So it was like you. So you're not, it's 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 going to be a bit of um. It, it's almost it almost felt like you were, uh analyzing two different games in, in, yeah. in, in some ways. I thought the A&M run check against the Maryland eye was really smart, Jake. Yeah, third and eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's like, okay, you want to do that? Well, we're just we, – you're giving us the edge. Yeah. We're just going to take well, it. Yeah, it was a definite run check, and we mentioned it on the broadcast. As soon as you saw it, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, you know, third and eight's not great for you with Wigman in there, and you could see them making the check and – you know, you felt like that was coming. That's not, that's why you only saw it one time. And then for LSU, they thought they were for sure going to throw the football. Yeah. And they checked to it. And that, look, that was a big moment in the game. I mean, they get a touchdown on that drive. You stop them there, you hold them to maybe a field yeah. goal opportunity, and you go into the locker room at minimum up 17-3. to three. Uh, I thought Levy and Moss is the best running back you faced all year. I'm trying to think who else. I mean. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't really think that's – I mean – up for discussion. I mean, yeah. Rocket Sanders is, he's got some moments. Woody Marks has some moments. Um, he for, plays good guys. Quinny Jackson's good. You know, everybody's he good. was kind of banged up. Yeah, that's true. And he never really was healthy in that game. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, he was, look, he was bullying you even when they weren't really great offensively. He was finishing every run with dude, him being tackles, the enforcer. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, ah, Chris Hilton. Mm, man. You can tell it's his first game back uh, on the first missed field goal drive. That would be one of the big LSU mistakes where I really feel like you did leave a massive play on the table that could have changed the entire dynamic is when he jumped too early on that first ball because that was perfectly thrown. He was underneath the defender. If he times that jump correctly, he has a very good chance of uh, coming down with that ball, and it's going to be a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, you could tell there was some rust there, and uh, yeah, there's always going to be. And I think it was two, if I'm not mistaken. Like, yeah, there, it's was, two a second, like there some, was a second uh, early jump. Misjudged the jump. Yeah, but that first one. The first one, one was definitely. That was play. like a touchdown. That's yeah. how you draw it up, and you end up missing the field goal that yeah. drive. Like, that was a that 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 was a big swing if you could have timed that a little bit better. And then, look, I thought the interior line just really struggled against the AMD line, not just Mabenga, even before. I mean, Miles Frazier was out over his toes a lot. Um, Shamar Turner gave you a ton of trouble. Again, like I said, I think Nick Scorton outside of Kennard, probably the best you've faced this year. Um, 
This is probably the most pressure with the least amount of run support that Nuss has had all season. Because remember, even in South Carolina, you made adjustments and you ran the ball very well the second half. That never happened this game. And it's just too much. And then I did think that Nuss got rattled after that first pick. And I, I think he got rattled a bit. And you saw him miss a couple throws he didn't normally miss. And then, you know, he almost threw another one in that little alert where he, like, kind of double clutch. He, he just he just looked like, you know, it got to him a little bit. But you're asking him to do – you're asking him to do too much. You, 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 you got to have some support for him at a certain point. Yeah, it, it's – the run game has to go up a couple of notches, not just one. I mean, that's that's the obvious statement there. But you look at some of the matchups that you have – coming down the stretch here, you're going to have to run the football. Yeah. Like these aren't going to be games where you can go out there and throw it 55 times and expect to be successful. Um, all right. When we get back, uh, we'll pr- you know, we're pretty much wrapped up with this game, but continue to put your comments in. And then we got to talk some Saints charges as well. Keep it locked here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench. Go to K to Z window coverings, ktozblinds.com, ktozblinds.com. Uh, look, man, at K to Z, they are your experts. Uh, and they're going to come into your home, and I don't care if it's a starter home, a home of your dreams, uh, whatever it is, we can work with any price point. The bottom line is we're going to bring your home to the next level. They're going to come in and tell you exactly how the light interacts with them at every point in the day, what your best options are, both aesthetically and functionally. And then when you move forward, remember, uh, complimentary installation. They are the experts. They're the best. KTZ window coverings, KTOZblinds.com. Yeah, go to the website today to schedule your appointment. Have them come out because they're going to come into your home. They're going to know your home, learn your home, know it better than you do. And they're going to know that like in five minutes. They're going to give you what you need for your home. K2ZBlinds.com.